this week we are literally full with guests. And of course, as always, we've got the soap gossip with our gorgeous Hales. But we aren't going to waste any time today. Well, we can't. So on with the show. Yes, welcome to Your Manchester. Manchester. So as part of our GM Fringe special, we have got two of its stars live here in the studio. Yes, indeed. Let's talk kind of Loch Nessie. Oh, yeah. Yes, Loch Nessie. Yes, with uh, the wonderful Ella Dufton and, of course, Jacob, Jacob Dufton. Dufton. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what's the relationship between you two? He's my little brother. She's my older oh, sister. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Now, this is going to be apparently, I mean, I've not seen it yet because it's no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> An excellent LGBT musical, and it's coming to the Footlights venue from the 1st to the 3rd of July. Is that right? Yes, yes that's correct. It's and a what's great it called? Venue. It's, it's called A Surgeon's Photograph. Oh. Yes. Mm, it mm. sounds great. I'm excited. Tell us more about it. Yes, yeah, so basically it's set in the 70s on Loch Ness, and um, we have Robert, whose father goes missing, and he grows up thinking that his dad was killed by the Loch Ness monster. Aww. So it's sort of about him learning about himself and yes. along with his friends um, and along the way they face other issues. The show really does deal with a lot of um, deep and meaningful uh, um, ideas, like uh, that's where the LGBT side of things come into it. It's all about faith and connection with friends and growing old, coming of age and all that sort of stuff. Because you wouldn't really put the LGBT film, um, people with Loch Ness. I am dripping. I do apologise, everybody. <laughs> we are filming this on a very hot summer's day in a very hot studio. As you can tell, it's running down me, literally. Well, the, I'm melting. <laughs> Sorry. The, Proceed. The, the whole idea of um, setting it in 1970s Scotland, in rural Scotland specifically, is to really uh, address the point of uh, the... Um, opposition that uh, LGBT people faced during such a time and that they still face in the modern day. So you can see parallels between the 70s and between the modern day and see all that together. And it's all about uh, such a small environment, like they come from a very rural village and they go to Loch Ness, which is quite sparsely populated and all that stuff. And it's all about sort of that very uh, intense sort of atmosphere where this sort of LGBT side of things do come out of it. And it's about all that acceptance of that and how people, how the characters, the specific characters sort of address this certain point, like some characters are very accepting and some are very sort of standoffish and mm -hmm. also uh, it's about coming to terms with that, especially in a time where things were even worse back in, in the 1970s. Mm. And how are you finding it working with each other? <laughs> um, so far so good. Really? Um, yeah, so this has been like in the pipeline for like about a year now, we started talking about it um, mm. when we were back in Edinburgh last year. and. Um, Luckily, I've done all the difficult editing whilst he was down in Cardiff. So oh, right. That he couldn't shout at me for stuff that I've cut out that he wanted to keep in. Yes, um, yeah, it. but Jake's actually starring in it as well, so it means I get to yeah. direct him, boss him around like normal. Oh. <laughs> but no, it's actually gone really well. And what character then do you play? Well, I play Robert. I play the, the lead the lead person, which is it sort of helps because we've had a, a shortest time to form this show, but I also have written the script and wrote the music and lyrics for this in this show and so I'm playing this character who is sort of based on I wrote it when I was a lot younger when I was about 16 and it's about my sort of uh, feelings towards sort of the world and sort of how characters should accept people and all that stuff and so I'm playing the lead whereas and my best friend is playing the character who is um, dealing with the LGBT side of things and, he, and we've had a really good uh, friendship for, for over 10 years and so we've got a very good connection there. Well, so. Very good then isn't it? When's it on? It's on 1st to the 3rd of July at Footlights in Media City. Excellent. Yes. Absolutely fantastic and not only doing a play is a big thing but trying to do a musical <laughs> as well it's just kind of like a double whammy so really congratulations yeah. to you both so and uh, we'll be there won't we? We'll be there oh. thank you very much. Thank you. Right then, well, as we set for our next interview over in what's normally Sports Corner, have a look at this interview I did with the former star of EastEnders, Rita Simons, or Roxy as you may have known her. She's here in the Manchester until Saturday in a lovely musical called Legally Blonde in Sir Eyelash Glue here. A bit like me. Mm -hmm. Well, we're here everybody at the Palace Theatre and we're here with the lovely Rita Simons. And look at you. Now, last night I came and watched the show. Oh, did you? Absolutely amazing. So I saw you outside, but I didn't know if you'd seen it. You'd seen the I show. I don't hang around no, outside. No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not one of them type of girls, no. Uh, but it was wonderful. Thank you. And such a, a nice thing to see you doing something away from... Crying Rufford. and shouting yeah. and murders and... Yeah. And, yeah, I, and I think a lot of people have forgot that you actually started off singing. 
I did. I didn't start off doing theatre, but I started off singing. Yeah. And um, it's funny because it's so random, but on Wednesday night in Wimbledon, Sue Pollard came. Yes. And I came off stage after. I won't use all the, all, all the rude words, but she said, well, I can tell you've been in theatre your whole life. And I went, no, 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 I've never done theatre before. Is this your first time? It's my first time. And never. she went, I can't use the word she said, but something TV. But I still love TV. But yeah, I, I just happen to fall right in to well, theatre. I don't know. You talk to it like a duck to water. I know, I love you? it. I love it. And it's a proper good character for you, I think, yeah, as well, isn't yeah. it? Do you have a favourite part of playing um, the lovely Paulette? Uh, I think Irish. The Irish. You like the river dancing? I love it. Now that the comes from nowhere because that wasn't in the film. I know, it's random. So that was, just, yeah, very yeah. random, yeah. but very, very exciting. There's a lot of random moments in the whole show, do you not think? Y yes. <laughs> the cherubs on the roller the, skates. Yeah, <laughs> and the uh, the mannequins that just come and to life. The mannequins, life. yeah. That's kind of shot everybody. You can hear everybody in the And I the know. dogs. The dogs. Oh, bless those little dogs. Yeah. How are you coping with working with the dogs? Oh, I love dogs. You like I love dogs? dogs and I work now. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Rita. Um, I work with no dogs in my life. Um, I love, I love the dogs. But we've had a couple of bulldogs who won't play ball. All right. Had understudies in, and last week we had a, a dog de Bordeaux, which is a horse. A horse. It's massive. It, it came up to about here on me. Not playing Bruce. Playing. <laughs> Because you wouldn't get that in the chihuahua bag, would you? I, I, I bent down like that and I straight back. Um, and then we had Staffy last week. Oh. Yeah, we've had some, but... So you've had a full plethora this, of dogs yeah. then? The one we got this week is gorgeous though, Doug. It's lovely. Yeah. And they had to audition? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. They had to, you have to audition dogs. Each, yeah. Uh, and a song uh, and dogs. 16 bars, yeah, and all that, lovely. So we're on the stage. Are we allowed to wander about and have a little look around yeah. at your lovely... Yeah, you show you? Yeah, show Let's us. I'll just leave mine there, you yeah, know. Leave it there, but well, someone might just come and stand on it. Well, that's all right. Well, no, I'm not bothered. Okay, so this is Elle's house. Yes. This is where the oaks. I, I don't know because I'm not on. I'm in my dressing room. Oh, you having to lie down at that point? <laughs> <laughs> so something, something happens there. Something happens there, something yeah. Happens there, and then <laughs> yeah, like Dewey's caravan down there. Dewey's caravan, yeah. The bikes where the guys come on on. My hair affair is just round there, but it's Do you think you'll ever play a character that's actually happily in love? I doubt it. <laughs> you seem to get... I doubt you it. You seem to get all the... Do you know what? I, I won't say what it was for, but my agent was asking me if, if I was interested in doing a role. I, I'm not going to say what it's for. It doesn't matter. Right. The other day, that would have been a really great job, but the character was fairly straight-laced and middle-aged. Uh-huh. And I said, I'm not ready to play that yet. No. I'm not ready. I've got, I'm, there's so much fun to be had playing these sorts of roles. Yeah. So I actually said, I don't want to audition for it. Mm hmm Because I'm just, because if I got it, I think I'd be bored. Yeah. It's so much fun to play these characters. It is, isn't it? You don't yeah. want a happy life in anything in no. theatre, do you really? You want a bit of drama. Happy's boring. Happy's boring. Yeah. Happy is boring. Now, you're, you're here at the Palace in Manchester. Do you, are you intending to have any um, nightlife while you're here? Well, a bit of partying? I'm, I'm so boring. I'm on antibiotics. I've been a bit mad. Have you not been well? No. What's it been? Hay fever? An infection, tooth infection. Oh. It's really boring. Yeah. So I'm being quite good this week and I'm saving myself for the last two weeks in Ireland. Oh, yes. Where I can't guarantee, but I think there might be some parties. I, th I think there probably should be. And it's, you kind of do a lot of Irish jigging about in this as well, don't Best you? Best audiences are in Ireland because of what happens uh -huh. in the show. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how are you finding the Irish jigging? Amazing, I love it. Just got to get a good bra. Yeah. 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 I oh, couldn't do it. Man, fall out. they would be on the floor rolling down. <laughs> oh, oh, we're getting oh. wrapped up. We're getting wrapped up. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, long live legally blonde. Shabba. Well, that was fun. Now more from the GM Fringe and a lovely gentleman called Ronnie Leake. Basically, a talking trollop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell us more about this. Now, have we pronounced it right, first of all? Uh, trollop is right, yeah. Trollop. And, and what is it all about? It's about a chap who was born uh, with the condition Infantus Gigantus Maximus. He was born fully grown. So oh. his mother died as he was born. Oh. His father wasn't happy and sent him away to Mrs. Scrunt's home for unwanted and difficult waifs, where he stayed until he was 16 and escaped and found H.G. Wells. And when he found H.G. Wells, H.G. Wells gave him the time machine. Oh. I love a time machine! Oh, yes. So he travelled back in time and he met people like Casanova and put him straight because Casanova didn't know how to be a lover. Italian Casanova is like it is. 
And, <laughs> but it's very sad because it cannot, uh, it cannot get it. It only says, it, I want the Anki Banki. And of course, uh, um, oh, it was, it's like a low, a low. Well, Charlotte points out, you can't just say, I wanted that Anki Banki. You have to be <laughs> more, more discreet and you have to flirt a bit more. And call somebody a Trollope. And, and call them a Trollope. Oh, yes. And he meets Hitler as well, which is nice. He meets Hitler? Yeah, a nice Hitler. Okay, that goes. <laughs> A nice Hitler? <laughs> Did you see that delayed reaction there? Yeah. A nice Hitler. I was just letting that go over my head. Yeah. I'm just going on to the next subject. Yeah, he's a nice Hitler. Which is? So did this come out of your own head then? Yes, is this a it brand did. new play that we've got? Oh here? yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I got the idea about 20 years ago, to be honest with you. And, and it sort of, I played around with it. And then uh, I, last year I got the impetus to sort of I put it on the fringe. So I started working on it. Funny enough, when, I, when I, I'd written, I'd written it for three men. And... Uh, when I did the casting, I thought, open it up. And I've got two fantastic women and one bloke in it. Ali Khan, who's a, a comic woman. Yes. And Jennifer Banks, who does yes. Strife in an Old yeah. Town. She does. And Simon Hallman is the lad who he plays Percy. Right. And he's just come out of Italia Conti, so... Wow. So That's they're okay, really, really it? good. They're better than I deserve. And are they playing all these multiple 23 roles? 23 parts, yeah. Wow. Well, it's actually, the two girls play most of them. Simon is just Percy right the way through. He's the thread. They are the... the, the uh, they're the bread, he's the, he's the ham. Right. That makes sense, that makes sense. No, I'm always more fond of meat. <laughs> now then. So, what do we, what are we to expect from this show then? Well, uh, it's an, an hour long, so you can be back in the pub. I, I do actually say that in the pre-show thing. Uh -huh. You don't, don't want an interval, do you? You don't need an no, interval. No, no yeah. not unless there's a confectionery place to go <laughs> to. No. So you've got an hour, an hour watching this, and it's just going to be... I'm, I watched it yesterday. I have to, because I'm directing it. And, um, right. I watched it yesterday, and they're fab. Really? I'm really excited about Monday now. So, and you sort of, when you're directing something, you've seen it so many times, as you'll know, you, you don't find it funny, do you? No. You know, but last night I did find it funny again. So when I see it on Monday, I think, I think people will laugh. It's an audience. where's it on at? 53.2. It's right. on Monday. Oh, it's a lovely venue. Yeah, yes, the pod, yeah. which I believe is very hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm sure it's no hotter than this place, though. But then I've got the uh, uh, the King's Arms on the 20th and 21st. Oh, upstairs? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And so. it must be amazing seeing your baby come to life. You know, you've, you've, you've born it yourself, yeah, yeah. And, and now it's actually happening. It's funny you should say that, because it's what goes on to it. You've got the, the words, and the words, they've breathed life into the words. And then we, and they say, what about, what do we do this? What do we do this in slow motion? What do we do that? And you're thinking, yeah, great idea. You know, see it all... It's great, yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing that. Yeah, I'm quite excited. This one sounds well, good. Yeah, I like I'll it. Give you a confidence and profit share. Oh. <laughs> now, we'll pop along anyway. You won't recognise me. I'm indiscreetness. I will. Oh, she'll be the other trollop. I'll be the other trollop <laughs> with oh, you. If you come along, I'll give you a with t shirt. With you. <laughs> oh, do I get a t shirt? Got, my memory's so bad, I need, because I forget the name of the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love that. I love it. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, we're here. <laughs> All right, then. So, there you are. So, we're looking forward to that. It sounds like it's going to be good fun. It should be good fun. Yeah, eight sounds quid, like... Eight quid. Eight eight, you can't go wrong, can you, you for eight quid? That's a packet of fags. Mm. <laughs> and if smoking's bad for you, how can it cure salmon? Think it through. Now, then. So, lots of drama and comedy over at the Fringe. But what comedy and drama is going on over in Soapland? Hales, it's over to you. Hi, I'm Hayley and welcome to Soap Corner. This week we're going to start off with EastEnders. On Friday, Jean's husband is accused of domestic violence. And next week, Rainey makes a move on Max Uer. Carmel goes missing as well on the day of the funeral. Now, going back up and going over to Oaks, this week Imran throws tea over Misper after she cancels his trip after finding out he used her credit card for alcohol. Tegan is finally allowed out of hospital, but she's not happy about it. And next week, James's sad backstory is revealed, and Ellie discovers she's pregnant. Now across to those lovely cobbles, and on Friday, Simon's life of crime gets worse, because Tyler persuades him to break into Daniel's flat. Flora comes back, and Tyler ends up knocking her unconscious. Liz tells Johnny she loves him. Ooh. And Jack has a shocking health scare. He's found slumped on the stairs and rushed to A&E. David also proposes to Shona. But what will she say? That's all from me. I'll catch you next time. Bye! Oh, well, we're out of time for tonight. So, simply say, see you Tuesday for a programme full of guests and topics, including Tony Cooper and John Stock. Oh, yeah! All right, then, let's say it. Ta-ra! <laughs>